Hello and a warm welcome to all our participants. My name is Rajesh. We continue our journey with Jason and the Argonauts as a return from coaches with the Golden Fleece. As a return from coaches with the Golden Fleece. The story goes. Setting sail again, the heroes finally arrived at the port of Aia, where they found Circe. She was washing her hair and clothes with great fervor, for she had been frightened by her dreams of the night. She had seen the walls of her house dripping with blood. A fire was ravaging her magical charms, and she was extinguishing it with the blood of a murder. And wild beasts, which did not resemble carnivorous animals, nor had bodies like those of men, but whose limbs were a mixture borrowed from both, came in droves behind her. Without knowing anything about the history of the heroes, Circe understood from their attitude that they had come to be purified from a murder, and proceeded to perform the necessary rites in order to appease the anger of the dreaded Erinius and to make Zeus himself favorable to the two criminals. She had recognized Medea, who was of her race, and the latter told her, in the language of Colchis, the details of the expedition. Medea omitted, however, the story of the murder. Unable to excuse her niece's fight with flight with Jason and the murder, Circe refused them hospitality. Claude, please explain the story. Circe is the daughter of the son Helios, and therefore the sister of Aetes. She embodies the capacity of penetrating vision into all details, while Aetes, remember, was the vision of the whole. She shows Circe she is not sees not the whole, which is a prerogative of his brother, of her brother, but the deep and true nature of every element in the seeker's nature. And this in the smallest details and in hidden corners of the being. Nothing can remain hidden from her. This capacity will only be fully active in man in the distant future, for the name of Circe's son is Telegonos, he who is begotten in the distance. For an adventurer of consciousness who has gone much further in yoga, this ability also enables one to see others as they truly are, even far better than the others can perceive themselves. The inner voice of the seeker, the one that is most strongly audible and whose image is a speaking beam, just instruct him to make an uncompromising examination of the hidden recesses of his nature. By this careful examination, he must see whether he had any choice but to sweep away at once all the half-truths perceived so far embodied by Absertos, or whether he did in consci conscience, with full consciousness, the best he could, in which case he will be purified by Circe. Purification by a god always indicates in mythology that the seeker has no real choice, given his evolution at this point in the past. It is also a sign of the integration of the experience. It seems that the seeker is given an opportunity at this point in the journey to see his or own deepest nature in truth. It is a grace given by the gods. It does not require any labor or sacrifice. Claude, can you expand on the dream that Circe had? 
At first sight, from Circe's dreams, one can understand that the seeker is terrified by what he sees in himself, in connection with his, with his evolutionary past. He becomes aware that he is in solidarity with the whole of humanity and that he has had his share in all the crimes and atrocities perpetrated by humanity since the dawn of time. On these crimes, Circe used to affix magical bones that allow the seeker to live without digging deeper. But now, as the fire devours this magic charm, the seeker can no longer hide them from himself. As you share, Sri Aurobindo has told us that there are two major causes of impurity. Ignorance, which comes from the fact that we come from a world of unconsciousness, and the mixing of functions. These two causes are illustrated here by the wild beast whose bodies are made of a mixture of animal and human parts. The seeker is therefore able to identify in his life these animal behaviors, which are very close to wild animals, animal life, but which do not have the purity of it, nor do they have the purity that one would expect from a human being, that is to say, the ability to put everything in its right place. The ordinary man functions most of the time in an inextricable mixture of impulses, desires, emotions, fears, opinions, illusions, all mixed with reaction from the body, from pain or from so-called vital necessities such as sleep or incipient hunger. Of course, just to recognize this, however, is not to cure it. As Claude loves to remind us, it will take a very long way for the seeker by gradually ascending into the planes of the mind and with cor corresponding purifications and liberations to reach perfect equality. To appease the wrath of the dreaded Erinis, which role is to put the seeker back on the right path of evolution according to the divine law. The fact that Circe agrees to purify the heroes without them admitting their crimes indicating, indicates that the path was inevitable. But what does her refusal of, of hospitality mean? Circe's refusal of, of hospitality may be an indication that she was unhappy that Medea did not tell her the full truth. It shows the seeker's lack of confidence in the spiritual forces. Moreover, Circe and Medea use a language unknown to Jason, the language of cultures. This means that the conscious part of the seeker cannot accurately interpret the exchanges taking place in the highest part of his being even if he has a very vague perception of them. It also means that he may not the spiritual forces. Mm -hmm.